Hello again everyone, this is Gilmer and this is episode 9 of my Let's Play Civil War 2, American Civil War 2, and that music's pretty loud, but it's gone now and it's time to actually play the game. And my last episode I ran at 48 minutes, it did not feel like 48 minutes, but it definitely was 48 minutes. So let's see. He. Nah. Seven days to get here. What's he going to do? He's going to come this way probably at this point. So uh, if he goes from here. Let's see. Yeah, um, yeah, he can go from there to there, I believe. If he does or goes there or whichever way he goes, if he's not coming this way, I'm just going to let him go. I, I don't feel like, well, I, I don't know. I might track him down. I might track him down or try to track him down. What's going on over here? Oh, I've got him moving down just one to see if there's anything we can do. It's kind of a kind of an aggressive move on my part Ooh, late February I think next turn is definitely when we get uh, the ability to form core and I will definitely start forming them if I get the ability damn it takes them forever to move Okay, I've got him moving to here. And let's see what we have going on in Kentucky. Okay, there's not really too much I can do. His, his power is down a pretty good amount. A lot more than I was um, hoping for. We just want to make sure we always have enough replacements to build them up so that when they get into any kind of skirmish, they uh, hopefully will get those replacements almost immediately. I think I looked at all of these. Yep. General H. Thomas has been promoted to rank of general. He was already really at rank of general. But now he's at, what, Major General? I don't know. But he was already at General level. He was just a one-star General. Now he's a two-star. And if we could get him to the point of being able to create an army, we'll immediately make him a core commander of that army. So let's go ahead and process our turn. Or we can always make him a core of this army and General Grant a core of that army. Looks like it's still thinking. Usually doesn't take this long to think. Okay, there it goes. Well, this turn is taking a long time to actually process. Usually doesn't take this long. Here we go.
Oh, look at what that bastard's going to try. His power's at 705, too. Let's see what we have. McClellan is active this turn. Northern Papers push for an 1862 offensive. Forward to Richmond. Forward to Richmond. It's time for our well-trained Union Army to quell the rebellion, the New York Tribune says. Northern newspapers are pushing the government to march south and kill the snake in its nest by taking Richmond. The pressure is mounting to force the hands of both the military and civilian leadership to move and finally risk battle with our well-trained but yet untried force or delay and submit to be mauled by the media. General War Order Number 2 Lincoln issued General War Order Number 2 announcing that four of the division commanders were now corps commanders. The order further stipulated that the Army of the Potomac could not leave the Washington area without leaving a force judged adequate by all corps commanders to ensure the capital's safety. On April 3rd, 1862, Lincoln was still concerned that only 20,000 troops remained to guard Washington and ordered an additional corps to remain as McClellan advanced in the Peninsula Campaign, leaving fewer than 48 regiments around Washington will cost the USA 50 victory points next June. Now, see, he's at 1,700. To hell with that. You can have Richmond, sir. <laughs> Definitely not attacking into Richmond at this point. He's still there. Damn. Definitely not doing that. Okay. Why is it his... Why is he not... Gaining... Oh, let's see. Lewis L. Wallace has been promoted to Major General. Brigadier General De Davis is awaiting new command. Brigadier General Siegel. Brigadier General Pope. The Old Guard Brigade has been formed. Hooker's Old Guard Brigade. USA d adopts the Corps Command structure. It is about damn time. Crap. Oh well. Okay. Let's see. So that Corps is 662, the Army is 882, or, I mean 812, uh, this guy is not, that guy's not a, tw a two star, but we do have a couple of two stars here, really I guess I should have had those guys with him at, at 
this point but I, I didn't do that and that's probably my fault but these all these guys can get down there and we'll we'll make them into core as well So that makes that army a whole lot stronger. Is he a two star? No, he is not. I'm wondering if I should actually take one of these two stars, Foster. Well, let's put him in command of that. Where is he? And then we can make a core there. And what is he? Is he a one star as well? Yes, he is. Although I could enable core, com I mean, not core command, but brigade command for these guys. And then Brigadier General Pope. He's a two star. Get him over there. Yep, we'll make him a core. Oh, and he's he's of core ability as well. Where is Gifted Commander, Siege Expert? Okay, so we need to get some of these guys out. And over here into these core. See how I took out I took out three brigades out of his force and he's still at 876 because of the command point penalty that he's operating under right now and I think I probably need to take out just a few more. So he's at 18 we can actually maybe put in one. There we go. Now see, he's at 1149 now. And when we get these guys over to here, we can uh, fill out these formations a little bit. Although he needs some more generals actually co commanded underneath him. We'll give him one. And we'll leave 
Thomas with Nathaniel Lyon, Nathaniel Lyon. Actually, I don't want to move him just yet. He just has that one brigade. I know, and I can actually. Now let's see what he looks like. Okay. So. Have I moved him yet? I thought I moved him. Two days. So it'll take him two days. He's got a power of 1100 as a core commander. He could probably use... Oh, man. That fleet. Grief. What are you doing to me, game? Oh, these guys are part of Fremont's army, actually. That's fine by me. Um, I don't know why this I'm going to put him right there so if he tries hopefully that will block him from crossing the river right there and then if he tries to cross he'll either have to come here or maybe slide this way and come across there Hopefully he tries to come across here. I don't know if you heard that, but I was just saying um, I'm going to put a, a fleet right here, and hopefully he'll try to come across here. And if he does, he'll be crossing a river, and General Grant will be waiting on him. That's uh, my plan. And once I get General Grant here, I might move him across the river here and then try to attack him because Grant is set up pretty good although he's a little weak on artillery and we actually have Western Volunteers oh that's that these guys are all ready I'm not moving them out of there though. Are those artillery units ready yet? Why are they? This, this unit is finally back to pretty good strength. We'll move him down. Zero supply there. Let's move them up there. If we can, we'll get him over here and put him under a command of Carson. Let's look in on those artillery units. There's Burdan's brigade still sitting there. Every time I try to move him, I think he just decides not to go. Reading Pennsylvania, no. I know I did them in it somewhere like Philadelphia. There's Harrisburg. Yeah, they're still building. Approximately two turns. Okay. So we do know that we're getting those artillery units at some point. And um, hopefully that will uh, you know, give us the force we need. What's this? If we turn... I don't get that. Why would it do that?
looks good. Um, that looks like it's in good shape. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's a Gatling gun. And those are three 12 pounders. Ninety seven to ninety seven in morale. So let's go ahead and process this turn and see what we can see about what goes on with our movements. I'm hoping Grant can force Braxton Bragg into a battle and, and uh decisively thrash him because I want Grant to get that seniority for winning battles so that I can promote him to Army Commander. And then once I do, I'm going to ship McClellan and Fremont out of the area, promote Grant to Army Commander, and then attach all those corps onto Grant's army as opposed to onto the other two armies. And then you might see some good fireworks once that happens. Now the blockade's at 25%. Oh, my rail's down. I need to buy more rail capacity. my ships where are my ships McClellan is active this term. McClellan removed as commander in chief by President Lincoln. Franklin? Two star? Let's just put these guys in with Franklin. Brigadier General Curtis. I see it all like that. Jefferson Davis, not to be confused with the Jefferson Davis that was actually leading the South as the President of the South. Look at all that artillery. There we go.
getting there. There we go. So we split these up into three different core. Well, wait a minute, the army and then two core. So we went from he was about between eleven and twelve hundred power. So now it's seven twenty eight plus eight twenty, which is fifteen hundred, plus six hundred, which is twenty one hundred. So we've increased our combat ability about 40 percent just from doing that alone that's uh pretty pretty good oh and this guy oh yeah and we could possibly get him some troops we need to build some more troops and then he's he's gonna get there in nine days. Hopefully he'll. What is he? Is he a one star? Yeah. There's Buell. Buell has two. See, he could help too. Okay, well, how do we have this? He's at four of fourteen. So let's put these in there and see. 10 of 14. He's at 540. 13 of 14. 621. That's good enough. And then he is just over. I wonder if we okay so now see see when I enabled him as a division commander that freed up some of the command points and but four we were I think three command points over and now we're at 12 of 12 so that's makes him at 600 Makes George Thomas at 600 as well. He's inactive though. Damn it! I wanted him to be active. He's inactive too. Are they part of the? They're part of the. Let's see. Nope. They're still part of Fremont. Fremont's got a better strategic rating. Oh. 12 days, 21 days. Let's see what we can do about that. And about to go on the offensive on, in, in Kentucky because middle Kentucky to western Kentucky is has far too many Confederate troops floating around in there and I don't like it don't like it one bit oh and he's active oh man I wonder if we no he's inactive really want to know what his composition is. Vienna, Missouri. That's this right here. Let's 
not really worth it. A training of New Jersey in Salem. Is that here? No. Where's that? There it is. We could use those. We could use that. Oh, look at this guy. Forgot all about him. And he's got a two star as well underneath him. Artillery units are not doing anybody any favors by sitting there. I want both of them. I don't just want the one. It's very easy to lose track of all the units that you have floating around. It really is. So, anyway, um, I think I'm going to call this episode to a close. It's going probably fairly long, and I um, you know I might off-screen just kind of look around at all my troops and make sure I'm getting them where I want to get them because I know it's boring as hell watching me just move troops around left and right constantly. And if I do anything major, I'll probably let you know. So anyway, um, I'm going to call this episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is episode 8 of my Let's Play American Civil War 2. My name is Gilmer. Thank you very much. See you next time.